Hey everyone, how's it going? So, after the Bidoof run, I decided I need a little bit of break from super difficult Pokemon, and instead I'm going to pick a Pokemon you guys have been asking for for a really long time. Ever since I did my How Fast Can You Beat sub-series of the Red and Blue series, so many of you have been asking for Tauros, and for those of you like myself who are confused, in competitive Generation 1 battling, Tauros is very, very good. And it's easy to see why that is. In terms of its base statistics, it's just outside of the top 10 of all Pokemon in Generation 1. It also has a relatively good move pool, with some good normal moves, as well as some good special moves, and unlike in Generation 2 and beyond, its special is 70 as opposed to its special attack being base 40. So overall, Tauros looks to be pretty good. However, for our purposes, I don't think it's going to be as good as people think. And the biggest reason is its initial move, Tackle. And that's it. It doesn't even get Tackle and Tail Whip. It literally just gets Tackle. And obviously, since Brock is going to be the first gym leader, it's going to take a while to defeat him. Now, I've done enough of these that I've learned that there's no point trying to do minimum battles and going to Brock. That would just waste a little bit of time. Instead, I'm going to battle all the bug catchers in Viridian Forest. And unfortunately, there's just three of them in Red and Blue. There's also Rival 1A. I typically won't battle him, but I will here. As well as the Junior Trainer in Brock's Gym. But that won't be enough. I'm also going to need to battle some Kakuna and Metapod. As well as just battling Brock again and again and again. And while my hope is that I'll win every single time, the reality is it's pretty unlikely without leveling up just a little bit more. Now, because people will ask, I did try using Struggle. The issue with Struggle is the recoil damage. Struggle in Generation 1 is classified as a normal move, so it is a pretty sizable power-up from Tackle. Unfortunately, the recoil just makes it untenable. And the biggest problem in Brock actually is Onyx. If Tauros were to have Tail Whip or Growl or anything of that sort, I actually could have beaten Brock far earlier. But since I just have Tackle, when Onyx uses Bide, unless I miss a bunch, I'm going to take back a ton of damage. This is also as good a time as any to mention, Tauros is very, very fast. And in Generation 1, critical hit ratio is based on your base speed. So to put that into English, Tauros will critical hit one out of every five moves, on average, of course. And if a critical hits while Onyx is using Bide, that's not very good. So in the successful battle, it wasn't really anything interesting going on, to be perfectly honest with you. I get very, very lucky against Geodude and get three critical hits. This is even more important because Geodude likes to go for a defense curl, and while Taurus will do pretty decent damage before a defense curl, after a few of them, it's doing next to nothing like pretty much every other Pokemon using a normal move. Those critical hits, though, completely destroy the Geodude, and I've only taken eight hit points of damage. With that buffer, I'm able to better withstand Onyx's attacks. Now, Onyx only has three moves, Screech, Bide, and Tackle. We essentially want Screech, misses with Tackle, and then Bide at the wrong times, either when I miss or don't get crits. It was literally just a matter of rolling the dice. Would the right combination of moves in combination with good critical hits on my part be enough to knock out Onyx before I ran out of HP? As it would turn out at level 14 in this particular battle, the answer was yes. We do defeat Brock and we can move on. And this is the unfortunate part about these Generation 1 runs and why I know some of you want me to try in Generation 2. Which I won't, but we'll talk about that in a future video. The point here I'm making is that with a Rock Gym Leader first and with such shallow move pools for most Pokemon, Tauros is at a pretty heavy disadvantage. It's taken us about 40 minutes longer than Pokemon like Articuno to defeat Brock, and so even if Tauros is super great and can make up tons of time elsewhere, 40 minutes is a pretty significant hurdle, and it's very unlikely Tauros will be able to challenge for Tauros to even get a whiff of the top tier Pokemon, but who knows, that's why we do the runs. Anyway, after we get through Mount Moon, we are going to go and instead of battling Misty, I'm going to go battle Rival 2. And it's in this battle that Tauros' strengths really shine. I get a critical hit off the bat, and Pidgeotto's Gust is not doing all that much damage. It does go for Quick Attack, and I don't get a crit, 
but it doesn't go for Quick Attack on turn 3. More importantly, it did not get an opportunity to use Sand Attack, and I think that should be good enough to breeze through the rest of this battle. Both Abra and Rattata fall in one hit, albeit both have critical hits, but that just goes to Tauros' strength. It's fast, and so it crits a lot more than other Pokémon. Squirtle doesn't even deal any damage to me, and Rival 2, which can sometimes be a very difficult and annoying battle, was really, really easy. A first try victory. Now, there is one Onyx Trainer coming up, but since it doesn't have Bide, it's not a problem whatsoever. And after we're done with all the trainers here, we're gonna get Stomp. A move that's nearly two times as powerful as Tackle, can't miss, and has a small chance of causing a flinch. But in our next battle, we're not going to really need one. Misty was an absolute joke. Staryu was knocked out in a single stomp, no critical hit needed. Starmie would have taken three, but we get that useful critical hit. It decides not to go for Bubble Beam, I doubt it would have knocked me out or come close. And so, three hits, two Pokemon down, two Gym Badges. Tauros is doing really, really well. And you might think Stomp is going to be a useful part of our arsenal. You'd be wrong, because there's no reason when we get to the SSN not to immediately get Body Slam. It's 85 base power versus 65, and while it doesn't flinch, it has a chance to paralyze at least non-normal Pokemon. Gen 1's so weird, man. But yes, with Body Slam, just look how powerful my Tauros is. I don't even need to heal, Pidgeotto hits me with quick attack, whatever, one shot with Body Slam. Oh, you think this Raticate could stop me? Can't stop Body Slam. Kadabra, you might be my favorite Pokemon, but right now you're the favorite thing to attack with Body Slam. And Wartortle does have very good defense, and so we're going to need a second Body Slam, but that's okay. Pretty easy victory, all things considered. And speaking of which, I don't anticipate Lieutenant Surge being very difficult. One thing that's interesting is that Tauros, while it can learn Earthquake, can't learn Dig. So we're going to have to use Body Slam, but I don't think that's going to be an issue. Leads off with Voltorb, and yep, another one shot with Body Slam. Next is Pikachu. Pikachu has horrendous defenses, so easily one shot with Body Slam. Not sure if it's going to one shot Raichu. It doesn't. We do get a Paralysis, though. Pretty funny. It goes for Thundershock instead of Thunderbolt, no critical hit, we knock it out. In case you were wondering why we can paralyze a Raichu and not a Rattata, for example, Generation 1's very strange. You cannot status a Pokémon with a move of its type. So this makes sense, you cannot burn an Arcanine with Ember. You can't paralyze a Pikachu with Thundershock, but you can paralyze it with Body Slam, a normal move, and you can't paralyze a normal Pokemon with Body Slam. Very strange, they obviously change this going forward. And speaking of going forward, that is what we're going to be doing. And in the next section, there's really only one trainer I'm worried about, the Hiker with two Geodudes and a Graveler. I still win, mind you, because they use Self-Destruct, and not only is Tauros very powerful, it's also very bulky. I mean, Having the 11th best base stat total is probably pretty good. And while we could have got even better luck, hey, can't complain about a victory now, can we? And the truth is, this is the last time I really need to worry about rock Pokemon, because as we head to Celadon City, I'm going to go to do shopping first. And the reason is, on the roof where you're going to buy a beverage anyway to get into Saffron, we can buy an extra fresh water, give it to the girl who is thirsty, and she will give us TM13 Ice Beam. Now, Tauros isn't the best special attacker in the world, but Ice Beam's gonna do a heck of a lot more damage to rock Pokemon than a Body Slam will. Don't believe me? Here's Giovanni number one. Ice is only super effective against ground, not rock, and yet we still knock out the Onix in one hit, and we also knock out the Rhyhorn in one hit. Kangaskhan, I mean, come on. Is it gonna be your problem? Nope, it's already gone. And that is, well, pretty much how things have been going up to this point. So I have to decide, Erica or Rival 4? Rival 4 is going to be easier, I think, so I'm going to do Rival 4 first. But I won't forget Erica, I promise. I'd forgive you, however, if you forgot this Rival 4 battle, because it is an absolute snooze fest. Tauros has a move for every single Pokemon, with the exception of the Growlithe, 
And it doesn't matter because each and every one is in fact a one hit KO. Perhaps War Turtle, maybe the critical hit mattered. I don't really care. This is going super, super well. And while it would be nice to have something like Dig, not only so we could get a super effective move against Growlithe, but it would make the Ghastlies easier, they weren't a big issue. And so at this point, as I promise you, I didn't forget about Erica, so we're actually going to battle her. Victory Bell is pretty high special, so I'm going to go for Body Slam. I get a crit, so I don't even know if that would one-shot, but I guess I won't find out unless I lose. Tangela Ice Beam does not one-shot, but it goes for Constrict, one of the worst moves in Generation 1, and we knock it out. Finally, Vile Plume has Petal Dance. That could do some decent damage to me. However, and forgive me if you've heard this one before, we get a critical hit, and Erica is another one hit KO. We have not lost a battle since Brock. Tauros is absolutely just demolishing the rest of the game so far. But this is the point where the game tends to get a little bit harder. I have to decide whether I want to go to Fuchsia to face Koga, or to go to Saffron and face rival Fievel, which is what I decide to do, and I'll talk about why in just a second. For now, we have to try to actually beat a much more difficult trainer, as you can see by the fact I am four levels lower than Pidgeot. Thunderbolt still does about half, but Pidgeot goes for Sand Attack, and at this point, I think we're done because missing is pretty bad. I was curious how much Body Slam would do, but I get a crit. It knocked it out in two hits. Okay, that's one down. Now out comes Growlithe and we get one miss, two misses, three misses, all right, only three misses, but we don't knock it out on the fourth hit. Very close, we paralyze it. So very, very frustrating. This is why I don't want to get hit with Sand Attack. And we're below half HP after Growlithe. That is not good. Now out comes Execute. I miss, it puts me to sleep. And then it uses Leech Seed. All right, we're done here. All right, this time I opt to go for Body Slam. And even with the crit, it doesn't knock it out. Meaning Ice Beam was the better play. Thankfully, Pidgeot doesn't actually do anything to me, so I can knock it out and I'm pretty much at full health. This time against the Growlithe, I don't miss. I get a crit. That's two down and basically full health. And if you're getting bored of that result, I have bad news. We get another critical hit and another one at KO against Execute. But now out comes Alakazam. I do outspeed and almost knock it out. It's at like one HP. And yikes, well, I can't say I didn't deserve that. A bit of a taste of my own medicine, plus the confusion, and I hit myself in confusion. So that is battle number two. Can we defeat him in our third attempt? Well, we start off with a one in 256 generation one miss. It is a glitch. Thankfully, it misses with sand attack. That's not a glitch. One out of every four times an AI uses the status move, it fails. I hit with body slam. It's doing pretty good damage. It hits with Wing Attack, it does not do good damage, and I knock out Pidgeot. This time we don't crit the Growlithe and don't knock it out. Ember does nothing, and we get to knock out Growlithe in two hits. We also don't crit the Execute. It goes for Reflect, not a big deal. Knock out Execute. And now we just need to one-shot this Alakazam. Come on! Well, critical hit. Don't know if that was a range. Doesn't matter, we have one more Pokemon, the Blastoise. I go for Body Slam, it's not quite doing half. It goes for Bubble, drops my speed, hits with water. Oh, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Oh, well, I guess the game wasn't kidding me. What a weird turn of events. But we are able to defeat Rival Fievel on our third attempt. And I mentioned that there was a reason I was battling him now as opposed to Koga. After we defeat Giovanni, we don't have a lot of HP and I could get a Hyper Potion, but as you're going to see, we don't even need the Hyper Potion, albeit with a little bit of luck. We can go to the 10th floor. There are no more trainers in our way. Otherwise, we would have to battle a rocket. And we can pick up a bunch of useful things, the most important of which is TM26 Earthquake. Earthquake obviously is super effective against Koga's Pokemon. Now that we have it, let's go battle Koga. The big question is whether Earthquake will one-shot Coughing. It does. That's very good. Now, I doubt it will one-shot Muck. It does not. It goes for next attack. I'm curious, will Thunderbolt knock it out? Oh no, it doesn't. Minimize and okay, let's not do that anymore. All right, so we'll one-shot. Oh, okay, guess it was not a one-shot. Sludge, that's not good. Now, if Weezing uses self-destruct, that's probably it for us. Not great. All right, we outspeed. That's doing about half. 
X attack and okay. Very, very good. Definitely could have lost there, but of course we didn't. And at this point, I need to decide whether I want to do Blaine first or Sabrina. I do have Earthquake. I think Blaine might be a little easier. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I outspeed and one-shot Growlithe with Earthquake. Same thing for Ponyta. Same thing... Oh, not same thing for Rapidash, but the Retroactive Super Potion is pretty good. And that is three down. Probably won't one-shot Arcanine, but I do outspeed. Takedown does a lot of damage, and see, I pronounced it the way you guys always tell me to. I'm telling you, Arcanine just sounds better. It's a canine. Anyway, I knock out the Fire Dog thing, and I am ready to now battle Sabrina. And I don't actually think this should be too much of a problem. Outspeed, one-shot Kadabra, one down. Outspeed, one-shot Mr. Mine, two down. Outspeed, don't one-shot Venomoth. Leech Life, not a problem. Three down. We outspeed and don't one-shot Alakazam. That's not great, but it uses Recover. We will be able to knock it out on the second hit. And pretty easy Sabrina battle. I'm not anticipating Giovanni to be difficult either, but I don't think I will one-shot most of his Pokemon. But they're not going to really be able to do much to me anyway, so this should be good. All right, so the first Pokemon is Rhyhorn. We're going to use Ice Beam. We're going to... Oh, that's not good. <laughs> that's not good at all. I'm not too worried about the Tail Whip, but we're not even one-shotting Rhyhorn. Oh, yikes. Now, we do outspeed Doug Trio, which is great, and we one-shot it with Body Slam, but we have two Nidos and the Rhydon. We actually could lose. I mean, I started at half HP, but still. Earthquake will likely do a lot more damage. I'm going to use it, and Critical Hit helps. That's three down. All right, let's see if we can do the exact same thing to Nido King. That's great. Four down, and now Rhydon doesn't have too many great attacks. We should be fine. I'm going to go for Ice Beam. All right, it does about half. Stomp does a lot. Don't forget I was hit by that Tail Whip. But even at half HP, this didn't go too, too badly. And that is all eight gym leaders down. That said, like I always say, the actual challenge seems to start right now with Rival 6, the Elite 4, and then Rival 7, a.k.a. the Champion. Based on that battle with Giovanni, I have no interest in taking a chance right here. Why not use the rare candies? We have nine of them. There aren't that many battles left anyway, so I don't think this would cost us in terms of levels. And once we use all nine of our rare candies, let's see how Rival 6 goes. I decide to go for Body Slam against Pidgeot. It does over three quarters. That's pretty good. Agility, that's fine, but it will attack me first now. Of course, the attack it uses is Wing Attack, that does next to nothing, and we easily knock out Pidgeot for one down. Now, we weren't able to one-shot Giovanni's Rhyhorn, we should be able to one-shot this one. I don't think that critical hit even mattered. And so now we move on to the Growlithe. I'm gonna see if Body Slam can knock it out. It does. No real point in doing that, just kinda neat to see. So, that is three Pokemon down. I decide to stick with Body Slam for Execute. I get the Parahax, it does not attack me. Instead, uses a potion, so I'm able to knock it out, and now we just have the Alakazam as well as the Blastoise. I think we're good. The big thing is if we one-shot, we're good. Okay, we're pretty good. Blastoise can be a little bit of a problem, but I think we should be fine. I go for Thunderbolt. Critical hit is nice. It goes for Withdraw. So at the end of the day, those 13 HP that that Pidgeot was able to take off, that's all the HP we'd lose in this entire battle. Pretty easy Rival 6, and I'm hoping that's a sign of things to come, because the Elite Four has been merciless lately. We have videos where three quarters of the video is just the Elite Four. Tauros has been dominant in the late game. Will the Elite Four continue that trend? Let's find out. Okay, so Dugong, I decide to go for Body Slam. It does about half. I get the Parahax. It goes for Takedown. It does next to nothing and I'm able to knock out the Dugong. Now, Cloyster doesn't have great special and it has outstanding defense. I'm gonna go for Thunderbolt. It goes for Aurora Beam, that does pretty decent damage. Thankfully, no attack drop, and we're able to knock out Cloyster. Next comes out Slowbro, another very bulky defensive Pokemon. Thunderbolt does about half, which is good. Slowbro doesn't do much of anything, and we can knock it out, so only two Pokemon remaining. Jinx has very poor defense, so I'm going to go for a Body Slam. I got a critical hit, but I think that didn't matter. Who cares? The last Pokemon is Lapras. Lapras is very good. I should do a run with Lapras soon. Anyway, I go for Body Slam. 
It doesn't even do half. It goes for Blizzard and it does a ton of damage. Thankfully, I'm not frozen, but this is not looking good. If it attacks me again, I lose. I go for Body Slam just thinking I'm going to lose and I get a pretty lucky crit. So we're going to have to adjust our strategies here. But for now, we got the first try victory against Loralee. That's not too bad. And at least after beating Loralee, we get a very nice break in battling everyone's favorite Elite Four member, Bruno. He leads off with Onyx. I go for Ice Beam. I don't think the crit mattered. We knock out the Onyx. Next comes out Hitmonchan. I'm going to go for Body Slam. And oh, <laughs> okay. We lost to Bruno. This thing that could not lose to anyone has just lost to Bruno. To be fair, I should have seen that coming. Counter does not work the same way in Generation 1. It can only counter normal or fighting moves. So if I'd gone for Earthquake or Ice Beam, that wouldn't have happened. So I'm going to have to rebattle Loralee, but I didn't like the way it worked last time. So I'm going to adjust my strategies a little bit. This time I decided to go for Thunderbolt. And as it appears, Thunderbolt is actually the worst play. I'm doing less damage. So I decided to go for Body Slam. And it's at this point that I don't knock out Dugong and it goes for Rest. Not a big deal, but not ideal because it's going to waste a little bit of time. Cloyster, I'm not going to change anything. Just go for Thunderbolt. This time I get a crit. That's pretty good because Cloyster can deal some damage. Slowbro, the same thing. The worst it could do is use Water Gun, which wouldn't do much damage to me anyway. Jinx, I want to see if I need a crit. Looks like the answer is no. So I have a lot more HP for Lapras. After seeing how little Thunderbolt did to Dugong, I'm just going to stick with Body Slam. Lapras uses its own Body Slam, which isn't doing as much damage as mine. It's going to be a 3 KO unless I get a critical hit. Thankfully, Lapras cannot paralyze me because I'm a normal type, and I am able to knock out the Lapras. This is still kind of sketchy. I'd like it to be a 2 KO, but there's very little I can really do about that, rather than leveling up a little bit more. So now we're going to go battle Bruno, and this time I'm going to not play this foolishly. As always, we get the well-known fighting Pokemon Onyx. Ice Beam knocks it out. That's fine. I decide to use Earthquake against Hitmonchan. This is silly. It has such bad defense, but still going to be a 2 KO. Hitmonchan reminded me its special is terrible after it went for Thunder Punch, and I'm able to knock it out with an Ice Beam. Hitmonlee, I'm sure he's going to be a 2 KO anyway. I stick with Ice Beam. It goes for Jump Kick, and because it's super effective, it deals a ton of damage. I'm able to knock out the Hitmonlee, and while I'm not too worried about Onyx number 2, I actually could lose to Bruno again if Machamp uses Submission. It's a 1 in 4 chance, but I would automatically lose. I go for Body Slam, it goes for an X Defend. I stick with Body Slam because I don't think anything else is going to knock it out anyway, and it goes for Focus Energy. So we got a bit of luck versus Bruno, but we've beaten him for the first time, and we move on to the Agatha Lottery. I don't actually envision her being all that difficult because we have a strong physical attacking move in Earthquake and the only Pokemon I could even see surviving a hit is the Golbat, which can confuse me, but this should be fine, I think. All right, so we outspeed Gengar number one. Earthquake's gonna absolutely obliterate it. That's one down. I decide to use Body Slam versus Golbat. Of course, it confuses me. Thankfully, I don't hit myself in confusion, and that's two down, but I'm still confused. That could be really bad. And it is bad, because I hit myself in confusion. Thankfully, Haunter doubles up on the confusion that does nothing, so I get another opportunity. This time, I make good on it, and I knock out the Haunter, so we only have two more Pokemon to go. I'm still confused, but I don't hit myself in confusion, and oh no, I don't knock out the Arbok. I'm actually very surprised about that. Thankfully, she swaps into Gengar, and Gengar is not nearly as bulky as Arbok, not a particularly bulky Pokemon itself, and we do outspeed and knock out the Gengar. That means the Arbok is going to have no chance of doing anything to us, and this could have gone a little better. Would have liked to one-shot the Arbok. Overall, can't complain too much. Agatha not being an issue is so refreshing, let me tell you. After Agatha comes Lance, and truth be told, although I'm not going to be able to use Body Slam much, I do have very good moves for Lance's team, and this could result in Lance, who sometimes is even more of a lottery than Agatha. This has been the case in the last few runs. He could be just as easy as Agatha, but that remains to be seen. He leads with Gyarados. I'm going to go for Thunderbolt, and 
Don't know if that crit mattered, but I'll take it. That's one down. Next comes out Dragonair. I have Ice Beam, so I'm going to use that. Once again, a critical hit. Don't know if it mattered. Still, that's two down. The good news is I have another opportunity to not get a critical hit, and it doesn't knock it out. Dragonair goes for Hyper Beam. Thankfully, it misses. I would have liked to have seen how much that did, but that is three down. Aerodactyl, we somehow outspeed, but we don't one-shot even with an Ice Beam. Its takedown didn't do too, too much damage to us, so we should be fine versus Dragonite. Ice Beam does four times damage to Dragonite, so this should be fine, and... Wow! Okay, that's not great. It misses with Slam, and we knock it out, but I'm thinking Blizzard might be the play going forward. We'll see if we win right here. And the truth is, this is pretty much the same exact battle we just did, and it wasn't all that difficult. So could this be a second try victory for the Elite Four? That would be pretty legendary and better than almost every other Pokemon on the tier list. But like always, the only way to find out is to actually do the battle. And so, without further ado, let us try and defeat the champion. So Pidgeot can use Mirror Move, and I'm going to be smart and go for Thunderbolt. I don't want to be frozen, don't want Body Slam, this is good, it doesn't attack me, that's pretty great. And so we're at full health with one Pokemon knocked out. Now a very important thing is knocking out this Alakazam in one hit. Well it went for recover, so that's good, but yeah, we're gonna need a little bit more attack. I guess it's only a problem if we lose, let's hope we win. I already know I'm not gonna one shot this right on, but I do pretty good damage. It goes for Leer, and I'm able to knock it out. For the record, Surf Tauros can learn after Generation 1. Can't learn it in Gen 1 for whatever reason. Arcana, I'm going to use Earthquake. I misclicked. Ember is not a big deal unless it burns. Come on! Oh my god, that's probably the run right there. Thanks, Arcanine. Yep, Earthquake doesn't even knock it out at half HP. And it goes for another Ember, and we're able to knock it out, but... Two more Pokemon remain, and I can't use my physical attacks. Hooray. Executor is super high special, so I'm not expecting this to do much, and... Oh, half is good, but with a crit, so that's not good. At least it can't put me to sleep. It goes for Stomp, which, to be quite honest, is doing good enough damage at this point. I use another Ice Beam, and it's gonna be one more hit to knock it out. Stomp, I am pretty much almost knocked out. Headed to the Blastoise. Think I need a critical hit, or I lose. So let's hope for a crit. All right, moment of truth, no. And I don't even do half HP and okay. Well, that was unfortunate, but I have an idea to make things a little bit better. I'm gonna go to Celadon and yes, I probably should have done this first, but I'm gonna buy some vitamins. I buy three protein and three calcium. The attack and the special should help knocking out that Arbok and maybe making Blastoise a two hit KO from potentially a three hit KO. And, of course, I have to battle the Elite Four again. I'm not going to do anything fundamentally different, but don't you worry, I still have something I do want to discuss, which is pretty important. And it's one of the reasons Tauros can't really be as high on the tier list as it potentially could be. That is the fact that Tauros has a big thing working against it. That is the fact it's in the slow level up group. And as I continue to talk about that, I should mention Lapras is so freaking lucky. This thing should definitely knock me out one of these days, but just hasn't done so. I've gotten some incredible luck versus Lapras. Can't believe I'm 3 for 3, but Bruno, there's nothing to say. So I can continue on my discussion about the slow level up group. You see, not all Pokemon require the same number of experience points to go from one level to the next. And Tauros is in, at least in Generation 1, the slowest of the level up groups. That's why it's called the slow level up group. Because of that, while most other Pokemon would probably be at level 55 or, heck, even level 60, depending on what group it's in, Tauros is stuck at level 52, even after rare candies. As we could see, those extra levels would make a pretty big difference, taking two Ikeos to one Ikeo, and some three Ikeos to two Ikeos. This can make things a lot more consistent and a lot less frustrating, and in addition, if I do need some more levels and battle through the Elite Four to gain them, I don't have to do it as many times. We haven't had to resort to that yet. As you can see, I'm at the same level, and I am adjusting when exactly to use the Rare Candy, but definitely being at a level disadvantage compared to both the Elite Four and the other Pokemon you've seen before 
It's holding Tauros back. Anyway, speaking of back, we've made it back to Lance. And I'd like to see how much my attacks are going to do now. I get a critical hit versus Gyarados, so I won't be able to find that out. We are using Blizzard. And we get a critical hit versus Dragonair number one. But just like last time, we have a good opportunity to get another critical hit against Dragonair number two. Perfect. Well, can I at least one-shot the Aerodactyl? I don't. Very close, but not a one-shot. It once again goes for takedown, and I'm able to easily knock it out. I should one-shot Dragonite, no? All right. Blizzard. No. No. Okay, man, that is not good. Imagine if one of the Dragonair used Hyper Beam or Gyarados or something. Man, we're so freaking close. It's so frustrating to see this, but we have made it back to the champion a second time. We do have Blizzard. That could help versus Executor, maybe. Not really sure. I'm just hoping I don't get burned and everything works itself out. But yeah, that's about it. Let's see if second try is a charm. Just like last time, we're going to go for Thunderbolt, and like last time, Pidgeot goes for Whirlwind. So one down. Now, moment of truth. Do we one-shot this Alakazam? Yes, we do. Very, very good. Two down. We might even one-shot Rhydon with Blizzard, but I'm not certain of that. Well, I still don't know. A critical hit. But we're at full HP going into the Arcanine. That is pretty good. This time, I'm not going to make the mistake. I'm going to go for Earthquake but it's not a 1 KO. Ember doesn't burn me. We're able to knock out the Arcanine. But despite the fact it has a terrible moveset, this Executor is quite scary. I'm gonna go for Blizzard and hope for the 10% freeze chance. We don't get it and it's doing about a third. It goes for Stomp. Decent enough damage. I go for Body Slam, don't get the Parahax, and this is why I'm concerned. It puts me to sleep, and the longer I'm asleep, the more it can attack me. Turn one, still asleep, it uses Stomp. Turn two, I'm still asleep. It goes for Barrage. And don't forget, I can't attack the turn I wake up. This is different from the rest of the Pokemon series. Speaking of which, I do wake up and it uses Barrage again. Wasting my time, but a good move to use. We knock out Executor, but at the end of the day, we are pretty much in the exact same situation. And once again, requires some good luck, I believe, in order to knock out Blastoise. I'm going to go for Thunderbolt, and it still doesn't even look like it's doing half. Hydro Pump hits. We have made it to the final Pokemon twice, but we haven't been able to break through. And honestly, I'm starting to get a little worried because in terms of what I could do better, it's looking like, at least in terms of the last battle, we're really at this point needing to rely on luck, which I don't like. I realize we have a bunch of new viewers and some of you might not realize some of the rules I've used. And a big one for these challenges is we cannot save between Elite Four members. Part of this is an homage to Pokemon Stadium and Pokemon Stadium 2, which I struggle with mightily as a kid. But the other reason is I don't want to have to rely on luck. Getting a little bit of luck here and there is unavoidable. Pokemon is a game of luck. But there's a difference between hoping for luck and saying yay and relying on luck in order to win. Because there are five very tricky battles, if a Pokemon's simply not able to defeat these five trainers, they're going to lose somewhere along the line. It's very unlikely everything goes your way. But only needing to rely on a little bit of luck here and there, such as Thunderbolt against the Blastoise being a critical hit, it's not ideal, but sometimes that's what we have to do. And at this point, that really seems like the only way without leveling up a little bit more, which to be completely honest, might be what I need to be doing here. Already, there are some pretty sketchy ranges and as you're seeing, there are definitely moments in a bunch of these Elite Four battles that I could theoretically lose. I am still overjoyed by the fact that Agatha, probably next to Bruno, is the easiest trainer. In fact, I would say Agatha is probably even easier because submission from the Machamp is pretty devastating when it hits. Thankfully, the one time it did, I didn't get knocked out. But speaking of luck, it turns out I was getting lucky versus Lance that in fact, the Gyarados is not a one-hit KO with Thunderbolt. I just was getting a crit every single time. And although it's kind of weird this has happened so many times in a row, the truth of the matter is Tauros is pretty bulky. And as you've seen, even when things go wrong, it's powerful enough and bulky enough to usually make up for good or bad luck. And with that, we've made it back to the champion. We've been burned. 
and then we got put to sleep. If neither happen, will we have enough HP to make it past the Blastoise regardless of what it does? Let's find out. Once again, I'm going to go for Thunderbolt. It goes for Wing Attack and of course, Critical Hit. Right off the bat, I've lost about 50 HP. Wonderful. We're able to knock out Pidgeot, but I'm pretty darn pissed. Now I'm hoping the one shot against Alakazam wasn't a range and it was. Beautiful. It goes for Reflect, but now it's like a 50-50 chance as far as I can tell. I mean, two battles, one yes, one no. Great, just great. Rhydon is next. And Blizzard does not one-shot. Remember, we got a crit last time. Goes for Tail Whip. That's actually good. That will make our attacks just a little bit stronger. So yay for Badge Boost Glitch. We knock out Rhydon. Now, Earthquake has a pretty long animation, but I used it so I would not make the mistake of using anything but that against Arcanine, and even with the extra boost, we don't knock it out. Ember doesn't burn. 117 HP isn't terrible for Executor, but we need to knock it out without it putting us to sleep. I opt to just go for Body Slam, and frankly, it's doing just about the same as Blizzard did. Misses with Hypnosis, that's clutch. Body Slam again, it paralyzes, but Executor is able to attack me. Two turn barrage is literally, other than a hypnosis miss, the best thing it could have done. We are at half HP for Blastoise. Darn, that Pidgeot wing attack crit was terrible. But hopefully this is all we need to win. I go for Thunderbolt. It's still doing roughly half. It goes for Bite, and this is it. If this is indeed a 2 a KO, it's over. Will Thunderbolt knock out Blastoise? No. Oh, that sucks. It looks like another damage range too. And of course, Hydro Bump had to hit. It can use Withdraw, you know. It, it does know that. Ah, uh, this is very, very frustrating. I could level up, but I'm going to try one last time. Why the heck not? It is my fifth attempt, and usually that's about the point where if it's not working, it's time to change strategy up. I do want to answer some questions some of you might have though. J Rose, why not use Hyper Beam? I get asked this all the time. Hyper Beam is only available at the game corner. I use all my money on vitamins, TMs, full restore, etc. Well, usually not TMs, but you get what I'm saying. I don't have any money, and the coins are pretty expensive, and it takes a really long time to buy them. How am I expected to purchase the Hyper Beam TM? I don't know but I know someone would write it in the comments if I didn't address it. Similarly, why don't you use Double Edge? Well, there is a trainer that I need to battle, so that would waste time. But furthermore, the recoil damage, as we saw all the way back with Brock, I don't think would be worth it. And frankly, I don't think it would do as much damage to Blastoise as Thunderbolt would. Blastoise has pretty strong defense. So yeah, I don't think that would be too helpful. And for the record, unless I knew Hyper Beam would one-shot, if it doesn't, I need to do a recharge turn where I can't do anything. So yeah, Hyper Beam is very risky. For some Pokemon, it would make sense, but I think Body Slam is the safest and most consistent play. Speaking of which, I could go to the Power Plant and get the TM for Thunder. That only hits 70% of the time, and it doesn't do double the damage of Thunderbolt. Yes, it'd be a 2 a KO, but the luck chance is ridiculous. There would be a rare candy there, but is it worth the time investment to go all the way out of my way to the power plant? At this point, I'm thinking no. And so realistically, the only option I have would be to level up Taurus a bit more. And if that's what I need to do, I'm willing to do that if I lose at any point. Thus far, it's been good. Although Supersonic by Aerodactyl is pretty horrible. Thankfully, we don't hit ourselves in confusion on turn one. And we do hit ourselves in confusion, but Dragonite misses with the Hyper Beam. And then we get the good range on the Blizzard and we are able to knock out the Dragonite, meaning in five runs through the Elite Four, we have lost to exactly one other trainer, excluding the champion, Bruno. <laughs> what a world, man. But the champion has proven difficult and I'm getting tired of losing. This is it. If I lose, I'm just going to level up and then I know it will be consistent. It will affect Tauros' time, but yeah, I guess five strikes and you're out in this ball game.
Like always, Pidgeot, I'm going to use Thunderbolt, and this time I get the mirror move and you can see. Does decent damage, but way less than something like Body Slam or Blizzard would have done, so it was the best thing I could have possibly done in this situation. We knock out Pidgeot, we are one for two with knocking out Alakazam, and well, we can't really say it's two for three because of the critical hit, but that's good luck, and that's two down. We're going to go for Blizzard versus Rhydon. Thankfully, we don't miss. It doesn't knock it out. Once again, a Tail Whip, so that's going to hurt versus Executor. But it will give us a little bit more attack and special, so... I don't know. Overall, it's actually not a very good thing. We knock out Rhydon, though. Arcanine, if we could one-shot, that would be kind of nice. I'm going to go for Earthquake. It doesn't one-shot. Ember, please... Oh, come on! Are you kidding? Are, are you actually kidding me with that? Two burns off of Ember. That is a 10% chance. The same chance I have of freezing. Oh my God. All right. Well, that's going to make this terrible. I have to use Blizzard versus Executor. And of course I miss. Why wouldn't I? It goes for Barrage. And don't forget, I have a defense drop. So that's amazing. Thankfully, only two Barrages. This time, Blizzard decides to hit. It's not doing even half. Another two barrages, but I'm already at 53 HP, so looks like we're going to be leveling up. This is not going to be a victory. I'm going to go for another blizzard, and okay, well, I freeze it. Too little, too late here. And yeah, with that burn damage, we're pretty much... Blastoise can do anything. If it attacks me, I lose. So I'm going to knock out the Executor, but it, even a critical hit shouldn't one-shot this Blastoise. Just terrible, man. I'm going to go for Thunderbolt, and it's going to... Oh, well, it went for Withdraw. I told you it knew Withdraw. So I'm at 34 HP. I'm going to go for Thunderbolt again. And will I knock it out? No. No, of course I... Are you kidding me? <laughs> Are you kidding me? You know what? We're taking it. I don't care. I don't care how bad that looks. We're doing it. We won. We, we did this. Yay. Celebrate. Oh my god, this was so annoying! Two burns! I, I don't think it mattered too much, but realistically, I should have just used more calciums at some point. Very frustrating to have that range go against me, because I think there were a lot of possibilities for it to be a two-shot. Man, that really sullies what otherwise was a very, very strong, strong solo run. And with that said, I actually think Tauros should be in the top 10. Don't forget, it lost about 30 to 40 minutes against Brock and still had a really, really solid time. If only it knew a non-normal move or something, perhaps even with this kind of sketchy Elite Four section, it could find itself in that top tier. Well, not the Mewtwo tier, but like the real top tier, excluding the greatest Pokemon ever. Anyway, guys, take care.